Okay. Hello. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley. Having some technical issues today. Sorry for the late start. Had to try a number of browsers, three different browsers, and then just reboot my whole system. But eventually, I seems to be okay now. Hello, Nader. How are you? Hi, okay. <laughs> Are you just uh, texting? Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, all right. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to start this week uh, for the next few days, actually. We're going to look at some vocabulary words which have. Uh, alliter alliterative properties, alliteration, uh, using the same sounds in repeated words. Okay. Sometimes poetry uses alliteration. Often advertising and marketing uses alliteration to make their their message or their product more memorable. It's easier to remember. Uh, in any case, hmm, do I use them much in everyday speech? Good question, Nader. Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> not, not nearly so purposefully are they used in everyday speech as they are in marketing. I mean, in marketing, it's a, it's a psychological idea. It's a concept used in marketing or in, if you're a poet, writing poetry, it's, um, it's something that uh, actively, you actively try to do. In conversational speech, you would just use these sort of, this sort of a vocabulary as it happens to pop up in a natural way. Um, do people use them more with their kids? Yes. Uh, Definitely. Okay. These kinds of constructions are used more with their kids, especially very young children when you're trying to, um, well, I, I, trying to explain the world to very small children who are two, one and a half, two, maybe three years old. You, uh, parents use these kind of uh, alliterations with their children all the time. Um, all right. The, the child falls down and has a small scrape on her wrist. Oh, you've got a boo-boo. Let daddy k kiss your boo-boo for you. It's a boo-boo. Uh, I'm not going to say uh, you, have a, you have a small contusion on your left ventricle wrist. You know, I'm not going to talk like a doctor. A wawa? <laughs> you have a wawa? Um, wawa, okay. Uh, all right. You say wawa, Nader. For uh, Americans, this is wawa. Would you like some wawa? <laughs> For example, another good example. Uh, no thanks. Okay. Um, when you're uh, obviously when you're trying to potty train a child. Mm, okay. Do you have to take a pee pee? Do you have to poo poo? Do you have the caca? <laughs> Actually, we have a number of these for bathroom functions. The more a wee wee. Uh, oh my goodness! I didn't really could see. I, you bring up the question, and I haven't really thought about it before. But my goodness, we have a whole slew of them to deal with bathroom functions and trying to explain to little children uh, about what they need to do in the bathroom. Uh, sure. Tucking in our children at night, we might say, night, 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 don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I guess you have a point there. Today, especially, all right, we're, we're going to be looking at these alliterative things uh, for the next few days. Now, we're going to look at uh, really different uh different types. Today we're focusing on repeating 
syllables, just like the uh, examples I was giving you, boo-boo, repeated sounds, syllable, consonant and vowels, repeated syllables, boo-boo. Um, now, of course, you know, teach, you mentioned, duh, I, I'm overlooking the most obvious that we teach small children, and that is, of course, mama and papa. Uh, I, the two most obvious many children's first words. Uh, okay, that would be extremely typical. But uh, so yeah, that's one area where we use a lot of them. But then there's a well, we we there are there are others that we use frequently. And what I'm going to do. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mama, papa, dada as well. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how the, the, I guess it has to do with the ease of pronouncing those consonants, mama, there, yeah, exact, precisely what I was going to say, reading my mind. Well, yeah, that's right. We're supposed, to, I'm a little bit telepathic today. I forgot. I was just going to say they're universal. Um, <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> and uh, that in fact everywhere uses the same sounds. Either dada or papa for father and mama is pretty much everywhere. Okay, w what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to share screen share some some of these. Sometimes they're called repeating reduplicatives, but that's a rather grandiose expression for this idea. I think it's much easier to understand repeated syllables because, in fact, that's what they are. Uh, and see uh, if you can guess what the word is. I've arranged it so you can see the first, obviously it's going to be repeated, so the first letter of both words is going to be the same. Uh, I'm going to share this with you and see if you can guess what the word is. Now, of course, if we had some more people join the class, some more students, come on in, viewers. Uh, if we get a few more people, we can turn this uh, into a little bit of a competition. We'll see how many. Uh, we can take turns seeing if we can guess these. Uh, we're going to look at them, see if we can guess them, and then talk about them a little bit where they're maybe used in a in a normal way. Uh, what we, you know, you know, I think they're doing something to the Hangout today because I have missing icons on my Hangout screen. Maybe that's why I'm having all my difficulties. There are things missing. There are things different. <laughs> oh boy, how exciting! Uh, okay, hmm. Yeah, maybe that would explain a lot. I'm seeing things I've never seen before when I'm opening up Hangouts today. Okay. All right, Nate. It's just me and you so far, and I don't think it'd be much of a competition because I actually prepared the class. <laughs> So, uh, let's see. First one. Do you have any idea what this is? We we uh, it's a repeated syllable word for anti-aircraft fire. Never heard of the idea. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very simply, it is called. Da -da -da. Now this is, uh, it, we're, now we're getting into the area, actually, and it should be mentioned, we're getting into the area of uh, actually talking about uh, um, oh, uh, onomatopoeia. Uh, okay. Now it's telling me that, uh, it's giving me the red underline here on my document saying that this is... Uh, not correct. However, I know for a fact it is. I've definitely heard this before. Very American, maybe. But exactly, it is the sound ach, 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 that you would hear 
when uh, anti-aircraft fire being fired around you. Exactly. So um, here's another area, okay, where quite possibly some of these r repeated syllable words are have to do with uh, really onomatopoeia. I think we're going to see more examples of that. Okay. How about number two here, Nader? I'm pretty sure. I think you can get this one. If you imagine uh, one of those war movies where they're on the ship, to seamen under uh, subordinate seamen, that is, will tell their captain, yes. They don't say yes in the Navy. They never say yes. Instead, they say, and actually I would add, in the, at least in the United States, in the Air Force as well. No idea? Oh, well, this is a good one to know. Uh, that would be aye, aye. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, interesting one. Uh, aye, aye. Yeah, and it's actually true. Actually, you would probably be rated on an American warship if you said, yes, sir. You're supposed to say, aye, aye. I don't know why, but it's true. Uh, it's very interesting because Old English, I, means yes, and in town meetings in the, in, in the United States where they have actual democratic processes, they will actually ask townspeople in the village to vote on a policy. And they would say in the meeting, um, I'll impose, I'll, <clears throat> I'll for the proposal, say aye, aye. All opposed, say nay. Nay is the negative. Although we don't have a nay nay. <laughs> we do have an aye aye. No, there's no nay nay. I knew you were going to ask that. Wow. Nay nay. Uh, <laughs> you know that one. Okay. The eyes have it. Or if you're thinking about seamen, of course, you can think about pirates. Aye, Captain. Aye, Captain. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Okie dokie. Yeah, that's another one we'll be looking at. Uh, I Ah means yes. Really? I wonder if that's related. Ah means yes in Arabic. Hmm. I have no idea. I question whether there's a possibility that it may be have something one may have to do with the other. Okay, uh, here's another one. The sound of a gun, or sometimes referred to as a gun. Uh, another on the uh, kiss, kiss, bang, bang, you got it. <laughs> exactly. Was that a movie? Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. That rings a bell for me, but I don't. It is a movie. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Right. Bang, bang. Another onomatopoeia. Uh, special there. Uh, obviously, bang is uh, definitely a, an example of onomatopoeia. Bang, bang. Very good. Oh, here's a tough one. How about this next one? Mm -hmm. A disease caused by vitamin B deficiency. Wow. <laughs> Uh, wow. And he, oh, he knows it. Very good, Nader. Excellent. Berry, berry. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what by, uh, what berry, berry looks like. I have had absolutely no experience with this disease. I've never known anybody who had it. I don't even know what it does. What are the symptoms? What happens? Yes, it sounds funny. It sounds like fruit, you know, berries. It sounds like something good to eat, but it's actually a disease. Uh, some people say that it's, it seems that he has berry berry to mock him or her. Why? I don't get it. Again, my ignorance as to uh, the disease's symptoms. Oh, okay, because it sounds funny. <laughs> okay. Fine. All right. Okay. I got gotcha. you. 
Okay, our next one, more bees, uh, to refer to a suite, and more often than, than, than not, an expensive suite, uh, and this is one that uh, French people would know, uh, bonbon, uh, yes, and you are correct, it is a bonbon. Now, I have to, I have to tell you that in English, when we use this word bonbon, it's a little bit mocking. Um, as in, for example, she just lies around the house all day in her pajamas, um, sipping sherry and eating bonbons. All right, to say that she is living a life of luxury and sloth, lazy, uh, that she is treating herself exceptionally well, eating bonbons. It's actually a little bit derogatory uh, to say that she has a life too easy. We, we use this expression just lying around the house eating bonbons uh, to meet derogatory. Let me spell it. And let me also say hello to Max. Hi, Max. Hello again. Hello again. How are you? <laughs> Nothing changed. <laughs> Nothing has changed in the last few hours. I'm just wondering how much of your horoscope is coming true today. In my prediction. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm curious, of course. Uh, okay. Max, we're looking at repeating reduplicatives. But uh, what a ridiculous name of something that you would never have to know. Basically, words with two repeated syllables. All right, such as we've looked at ack, ack, I, I, bang, bang, berry, berry, and bon, bon. <laughs> Oops, you've made a blunder. Max, do you have any idea? Boom, boom. <laughs> a what? By the way, in my... The, I've put the uh, underlined, um, what do you call it? It's fill in the blank, fill in the blank letters, but you can see that there's two letters for each syllable. I, I do have the correct number of letters here. Uh, Max, do you have any idea? A blunder. Bum, a bum, bum. <laughs> bum, bum. <laughs> no. Actually, I had mentioned this before to Nader. Uh in reference to children, it's a uh, boo-boo. Uh, a boo-boo can mean a small wound, small injury that uh, a child has. But it, if I say it about a, well, if an adult says it, I don't know, about some paperwork he's doing or, I don't know, an error they made balancing their, their checkbook or something, Oh, I made a boo-boo here. Whoops, I moved a decimal point. Oh, my God. I actually am rich. <laughs> Wait, that would be a happy accident. More often than not, it's the other way. Oops, I made a boo-boo. I made a mistake. All right, that's actually... It's fairly like common. Russian... Russian uh, I don't know how to say it. It's a very, very... Dangerous in a knuckle, knuck, nuclear science. What's very dangerous in nuclear science? <laughs> Pretty much everything. Uh, no, well, just um, oops. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oops. Oh, what's the most dangerous thing you can say? Uh, can a nuclear yeah, scientist yeah. say like yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we have that same. Yeah. We have that same joke. In English. Okay. What's the scariest thing a nuclear scientist can say? Oops. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Next one. Well, this one's easy. Nader, see you later. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah, exactly. Pretty easy one there. Bye-bye. Uh, one. Whoops. Not babu. Uh, Bye-bye. One strange thing about this, I, I don't know why, but you may hear English speakers use a very exaggerated 
intonation. Bye bye. Bye bye. If they're, uh, yeah, like that, exactly like you wrote, bye bye. Usually, if, <laughs> if someone is actually saying bye bye, it means go away, I'm sick of you. Bye bye. <laughs> All right then, bye bye. Okay, go away. Uh, it's a little bit of a sarcastic kind of goodbye. Bye bye then. Uh, okay, good guess. M Max, next one. A famous Latin ballroom dance. You can get this. I'm not into Latin <laughs> ballroom dance. Why not? Why not? <laughs> but why ever not? <laughs> really? Uh, cuckoo. <laughs> 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 Uh, although I don't have that on the list, that should be actually, that should be here. We, we don't have cuckoo, but it should be here. Cuckoo uh, is very common to express somebody who is, uh, well, crazy. A little bit strange. Yeah, or n just plain nuts. Uh, cuckoo. Uh, he's crazy. It's cuckoo. Uh... Yeah, that should be on the list. It's, it's not here. But uh, the Latin ballroom dance, really, you guys don't know this? Teach my cat. Teach my cat how to cha-cha. Yeah. I, I, I was, I, I've no, known it. I've, I've known it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Cha -cha. I knew it. I knew it. I just couldn't think of it. It's a cha-cha. Which I'm not sure if that's uh, more onomatopoeia or not. Cha cha cha. Yeah, you know, I do know part of the song goes cha cha cha. Okay. Oh, anyway. Okay, the next one's gettable. You should be able to get this, maybe. The sound, uh, definitely onomatopoeia. And we definitely use this one for children to talk about trains, to introduce them to trains. Yeah, Nadir, go ahead, take a guess. What do you, what do you think this is? No idea? In Russian, we say the same. Choo choo. You do? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or sometimes we say choo choo train, the, the whole thing. Oh, look, it's a choo choo train. Look at the choo choo to refer to the sound or the actual train itself. Choo choo. Uh, yeah, it's very common. Uh, you say toot toot. <laughs> oh, look at the toot toot. Uh, okay. Now that's interesting because I, I. Go ahead, Max. I think we either and toot toot and choo choo. Um, yeah. Either, I've heard, either ways. I've heard parents talk about a horn, actually. And use toot toot. Pick up your toot toot. Play your toot toot. Uh, which again would refer to the sound and the actual horn itself. Ah, this one is. This next one is in interesting and very interesting. It's common for some people to use this. This is a weird thing in English, all right? People fall in love with a certain expression, okay? With this, um, and they use it a lot. So you find this with idioms a lot. People keep using somebody you know. I knew a guy who said the um, the whole nine yards. He couldn't really speak for more than a half an hour was without using the idiom the whole nine yards. Um, so this expression here is an expression some people never use, and some people use a lot. Pigeon English. All right, this is interesting here. Um, Pigeon English, Nader is asking, is basically a modified, simplified form of English, which was often used for trade, especially in Asia and the Far East. I think that this particular word we're looking at right now comes from the trade English for... Uh, that was uh, with China. 
I think that's where it comes from. If I'm, I could be mistaken. I'm not 100 percent sure, uh, but I think so. Uh, in, in any case, pigeon. You can have a pigeon. Another. It doesn't have to just be pigeon English. You could be pigeon. Uh, another uh, language. But it's usually a very simplified, you know, throw away the adjectives and the adverbs and throw away, for heaven's sakes, all of the function words. Um, you know, um, words, you know, like uh, prepositions and stuff, and basically speaking in nouns and verbs. Right. Pigeon Arabic for Asians, that would make sense because you're going to have, you I know you have a lot of. A lot of Asians, especially in Saudi, Qatar, UAE, etc. You have a lot of Indians and Filipinos and Nepalese and so forth. And you need to communicate with them. So, yeah, I, I'm sure there is a pidgin Arabic in the Gulf area, right? Totally makes sense to me. Max, is there any kind of pidgin Russian? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, because uh, it's uh, you can it seems like you can uh, communicate with pidgin English, but it's very hard to communicate in pidgin Russian. I think. Really? Why? Yeah, because we we have a lot of grammar, a lot of grammar. Uh huh. We, uh, more than in English. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe it's not universal because they don't do it in Russia, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> maybe not as universal as I thought. It's uh, very, very, uh, how to say it's uh, funny to read advertising of from um, people who come in Russia and doesn't know Russian and they, right. they write, it, write it down and it's, it's, it's <laughs> every time it's <laughs> joking. Yes, it's very funny. I see the same thing living in the Philippines um, because many people assume that everyone speaks English in the Philippines, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. It is the second language of the Philippines, but it is definitely a second language. So it's very common to see signs and so forth basically in pidgin English. And they, and sometimes, you know, they don't, they don't know what they're really saying, you know. The, um, they'll call a place, for example, the Poo Poo Palace as a business of a restaurant, but not understanding. They think uh, Poo Poo is maybe a Chinese dish or something. They don't realize in English it means, um, you know, human waste. <laughs> so it sounds very, very ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, same thing happens. Okay. But getting back to this quickly, all right, uh, Max, do you know this at all? No, I, nobody. I don't have any clue. <laughs> okay, it's chop chop. Chop chop. Chop chop. All right, bring me some water. Chop chop. Bring bandages. Chop chop. Hurry up. Chop chop. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, the next one. I like this one a lot. Okay, I have to remember how to spell it, but uh, is it used? Not. It's not used very much, but every or any any American would instantly recognize it. I'm sure. Um, yeah, that's. Yeah, Nate Air, you're absolutely right. I, I don't understand pidgin English. And fr frankly, there's another thing. Besides pidgin English, in my experience teaching students from all over, and especially all over Asia, uh, they in, um, in Korea, for example, they, they have a totally, it's totally a different language. It's called, they're, um, it's called Konglish. <laughs> because they're, um, uh, it's called Honglish, or Konglish, Korean English, Konglish, Spanglish, right? 
uh, here in the Philippines, they speak Tagalog, so they have Taglish, right? It's very common, and many times it doesn't make the sense, make any sense. Words that are normally in English verbs suddenly are nouns or vice versa, and becomes incomprehensible. Actually, it's often. Okay, looking at this next word. Do either of you guys, this is a tough one, and I seriously doubt you've ever heard this. Have either of you guys heard of this to talk about a very elaborate dress? It's usually, we use this term, it's an adjective to describe a dress which is too, it's too much, too elaborate. So it's, a, a, again, a little bit derogatory, it's negative. What up? Um, to just um, no, I'm sure you don't know it. Let me uh, uh, try to remember the spelling here. How it is usually spelled? I believe it is frou frou. <laughs> oh, it's so frou frou. Look at her frou frou dress. All right, there's too much lace, and there's a mink collar, and there's uh, studs all over it. It's too not, and I don't mean elaborate like, like uh, I don't know, uh, Miley Cyrus or uh, Lady Gaga wears elaborate crazy clothes, uh, but elaborate like lace and girly girly, frilly frilly, uh, delicate, if it's too, what a frou-frou dress. It, it could be. You could be talking about men's clothing. It means it's extreme. It's overly feminine and cute and delicate. So frou frou. Uh, it's too much. It's over the top. Frou frou. Too much. Yeah, but too much girly lace and pretty stuff on it. I don't know. I'm horrible talking about fashion. I, I don't. Uh, it's very, it's very female. It's very feminine. It's too feminine. It's ridiculous feminine. All right. So if you're saying his shirt is so frou frou, why? It, okay, I might say why did uh why is it that pirates wear those shirts with lace and they wear it and they have all the um they have a the lace op tie open shirt with the lace on the cuffs. Big, elaborate, fluffy lace. You know, pirates are supposed to be tough, virulent, macho men, and they they dress in such frou-frou clothes. I, I don't know. Yeah, they do. It's too frou-frou. Uh, okay. Ooh, the next one. Someone virtuous or smug. Max, the teacher's pet. Yes. Uh, oh. Someone who will, uh, always runs to the teacher and says what bad things the other kids are doing. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I doesn't. I doesn't know. I don't smug. know. Smug. <laughs> smug is another word. A uh, good word. You should know. It means basically self-righteous. Somebody who's smug thinks they're always right and they are morally more correct than you are. They are superior. Yeah, someone who's smug is definitely arrogant, no question. Um, uh, if someone is smug, they, they are absolutely sure that they are correct. Whether they are or not, that's totally another question. But they uh, present themselves and act as though they know all the answers or that they are, in fact, their idea of the world is right. Uh, okay, somebody who always runs to the teacher and tells them what is going on is a is a goody goody. What a goody goody. Uh, goody goody, or we often use this expression. Uh, as an adjective, <laughs> which is how it may sound kind of funny, but this one is even more widely used, I think. Goody two-shoes. What a goody two-shoes you are. 
Uh, well, if someone's a goody goody, that they, they're they're too good. They goody two shoes. They never do anything bad. Oh, I can't I can't possibly walk not on the crosswalk. Oh, let's. We need to go to the end of the corner so that I can walk on the pedestrian crossing. It would be wrong to just cross in the middle of the street. Oh my God! What a goody two shoes what is wrong with you? Okay, just people who are too go annoyingly good, who are no almost non-humanly good. <laughs> right. Okay. The next one's easy. <laughs> you can get you can get the next one, Max. You know this. <laughs> yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Or, some, ha, ha. or sometimes, uh, of, of course, we we do he he. Ha ha. Or maybe even ho ho. Santa likes ho ho. <laughs> Santa Claus prefers ho ho, but uh, yeah. All right, ha ha, very funny. Um, and uh, also, it's interesting how we use this in texting a lot instead of uh, LOL, for example. But uh, we also use this in spoken English uh, in a kind of special way when somebody thinks something is very funny but you do not. Maybe because the joke is at your expense. You might reply, ha ha, very funny. But you're really not laughing. <laughs> you're saying it in a very serious way. In a very serious way. In other words, you're sarcastically saying, that's not funny at all. Ha ha. Very funny. Uh, okay. Let's look at the next one. Confidential. Okay. Nader, any idea? Ooh, yeah, he does have an idea. It's all very hush hush. Oh, no one really knows what's going on. It's all. Everyone is so quiet about it. I'm reminded of lyrics to a song. Uh, okay. Hush, hush. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, obviously, if we say hush to somebody, that can be a verb, which is often used as a command for someone to tell someone to be quiet. Um, and it, we may actually use it as a phrasal verb. Hush up. Uh, and yes, uh, in English speakers as well. Of course, just use the sound, uh, the expletive sound, shh, to tell someone to be quiet. Hush, shh. Sometimes both in combination. That's actually very normal. Hush, shh. Uh, I want to hear what the president has to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, here's one, which you may not know. Uh, beginning with M, a loose, bright Hawaiian dress. Uh huh. Max, do you have any idea? No. No idea. Nader, no idea. Okay. As so many Hawaiian now Hawaiian, uh, I, Hawaii had to make the list here today, uh, and I'll tell you why. There are so many, of course, Hawaiians had their own language before, you know, Europeans got there. And their language has so many um, oceanic countries, islands, so many uh, Pacific Ocean countries are full of these repeated uh, syllable words. So it's not surprising to me whatsoever that... Mumu makes the list. A mumu. Uh, I know that looks really weird. Really? To to use? Yes. Well, it's not English, really. It's Hawaiian. So, yes, it's called a mumu. If you can picture that, very bright, usually with big prints of flowers on it. 
very colorful and bright Hawaiian dress. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, Nader is expressing that they call an infant a no-no. Oh, by the way, which is coming right up. Actually, here, if we skip forward, something that is forbidden is a no-no. <laughs> a no-no is something that is forbidden. Oh, that's a no-no. You can't do that. And you will actually hear, we, parents tell children this, you will also hear uh, adults say that if I if you're a new person in the company where I work, adults will say this. Uh, okay, can I smoke in the staircase? Oh, that's definitely a no-no. No, uh, last guy that had your job got fired for doing that. Oh, that's a big no-no. And yes, we co-locate that with a big no-no. So that's a big no-no. Uh, okay, to say something is really forbidden is a. It's used as a no no. It's used actually as a noun. Okay, a new new. Hmm. Uh, uh, hmm. Interesting. The president of uh, the Philippines is. We got no no, new new. Uh, the president of the Philippines, his name is Nonoy. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if it's related. No, no. Uh, okay. Anyway, I, I was talking about before about how the the um, these repeated sounds are so prevalent in the Pacific Island countries. Uh, very much true, and that's very true where I currently live in the Philippines. In fact. It's very common that people's nicknames, everyone here has a nickname, and very commonly people's nicknames are repeated syllables. I have met several people named Tin Tin, Ting Ting, Ping Ping, uh, what else, Bong Bong, uh, <laughs> Tan Tan, yeah, that's another one, yeah. Uh, of course, the, the there's the, uh, the famous... Uh, what was it? French cartoon, you know, the reporter there. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember that one? Yeah. Tintin, of course. <laughs> Who can forget Tintin? Okay. Anyway, this is. We call him Tantan. Oh, we call him Tintin. How how strange. Uh. Okay. Uh, Max, you can get this one. A very common way to say goodnight, especially to children. Uh, I don't know. In Russian, we say something like "noki noki," maybe. I really? I'm and not what sure. Yeah. What, and what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, we say "noki spoki." Noki spoki. Rhyming. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's gonna it's come like, up. In, uh, it's it's like to have a good night, something like that. Okay. All right. To wish someone good night. You, you tuck the child into bed and you say, night, night. Uh, yes, exactly. That's it. Night, night. And it's, it's this is extremely com common. Usually to children, but sometimes adults say it to each other as well. It's kind of some of these repeated syllables words that we use for children kind of find their way into adult speech like no no I think uh, you know night night I, some of these actually get used by adults um, all right the next one is uh, is very simple I'm sure you guys both know this of course father uh, wait Max what do you call a father in Russian? Max, are you there? Can you guys hear me? Pat? Yeah, now I hear. Okay, sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, 
Max, what, what do you call uh, what do you call father in Russian? Papa. He was cutting. What? Papa. You you was cutting. Uh, oh, I, I, what do you? I can. I couldn't what, hear you. Okay, what do you use in Russian for father and mother? Papa. <laughs> was yeah, that your child in the background? <laughs> Just. <laughs> Sounds like your child. <laughs> yeah, like mom. Ah. Uh, no, no, she she yell, she yells mama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mama. Okay, mama. Mm -hmm. There, you, there it is again. It is universal. All right. For yeah, father, he, he would be yells. You would yell what? I can't I, hear anybody. Okay, don't know what's going on. Um, I, I get confused here where I live in the Philippines because Dada is also Tagalog for bottle, like baby's bottle. So sometimes my kids confuse me. I don't know if they want me or they want a bottle, or if they want me to get a bottle. <laughs> dada, 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 dada. Uh, yeah. Also, Tagalog is full of these kinds of sounds as well, which makes it very confusing. Um, yeah, they have a lot of words with just da 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 do da da. Uh, they're very very similar vowel sounds. Mammy, talk to me, mammy. Well, we use mammy for grandmother sometimes in English. Some people do. I I didn't. Okay, uh, last one here. This is the last one. What is another name for a papaya? Mummy. Yeah, mummy. Mommy. It has more of a ah uh, sound in English. Mommy instead of mummy. British write it like mummy, uh, like you have it, M-U-M-M-Y, but Americans have more of an ah uh, sound. It's more like mommy than mummy. Mummy, I know Brits say mummy, mummy, I would like some tea, but Americans say mommy, buy me a soda. <laughs> okay. Papaya, do you know it? Do you guys know this one? Max, Nadir, papaya? I don't know. Go over to the old. Ah, uh, go over to the old. Whoops. Paw paw. It's called a paw paw. Do you have papaya in uh, in Egypt, Nader? Or in the Gulf? Do you guys eat papaya? You don't? You're missing out. Oh, yeah, you do have. Oh, yeah, okay. Great. Great to have for breakfast. Max, do you have papaya? Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Very, yeah, very bad connection today. Sorry, I have to go. Thank you. It's okay. Well, we all have to go because our time is up. So bye-bye. Bye for now, Max. Thank you. Bye. All right. We'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it doesn't need a word. Well, true. Papaya. Yeah, it's very alliterative already without changing it to make it more alliter alliterative. <laughs> yeah, you're actually correct. Um, just A weird thing is they love alliterative words in, in the native language here in the Philippines, but in the Philippines it's kapaya. Kapaya. It starts with a k hard K sound. Go figure. But anyway, they have a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of fish here, okay, actual names of fish that are also um, these repeated syllables, mahi-mahi, ono-ono, um, mahi-mahi, fishy-fishy, <laughs> here fishy-fishy, yeah, okay. Um, thanks, Nadar, thanks for your patience starting the class. I, I don't really know what's going on with the... Uh, I don't know if it's me or Google or what, but uh, 
You're welcome for the class, and there's going to be a whole lot more at this particular hour through the week. We'll be doing other types of alliterative vocabulary. Hopefully, we'll get more students to join, and we can have a little competition going on. All right, I'll be here too later. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again real soon here on Verbling.